Hey everybody, so there are some polls that came out today that I think are worth discussing. The way to think about these polls, at least at this juncture in the 2020 cycle, is not to view them as necessarily predictive of what the outcome is going to be. So don't take any one poll and say that this should be construed as a reasonable foreshadowing of how the Iowa caucus is going to unfold or the New Hampshire primary or what have you. What you should think of it as is a snapshot in time of what voter sentiment is right now, um, which could change radically. But voter sentiment right now is significant for numerous reasons, because the party machinery figures out and tries to uh, you know, comport itself in accordance with what perceptions of voter sentiment are in terms of which candidates they endorse, um, who they give money to, uh, what you know, labor unions or advocacy groups are going to do by way of endorsements. So we're in a stage of the primary where polls are relevant insofar as they dictate what party insiders do. Um, in relation to the candidates and their standing in the field. Um, so, so that's the context in which I would discuss these polls. Uh, not that they're going to be predictive necessarily of something that happens in terms of a primary or a caucus in, ja in uh, February of 2008. Or, sorry, not 2008. 2020. I don't know why I said 2008. 2020, which is still quite a ways away. Um, but nonetheless... There are some interesting data here to, to go over. So YouGov is a pretty reputable firm. Um, it was roughly accurate throughout 2016. I actually would routinely cite findings from YouGov showing that there was a much bigger fissure within the Democratic Party coalition than a lot of pundits who are largely allied with the Democrats wanted to acknowledge. Namely, that fissure took the form of Bernie supporters after the convention, not being willing to state to pollsters that they were going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Um, and sure enough, that ended up being a contributing factor to her defeat. And in my experience, a lot of people in the media didn't want to acknowledge that data point. Um, but sure enough, again, it did have a it did have relevance in terms of the ultimate outcome of that election. And YouGov is notable because it's methodology is somewhat unique in that it's all online, which means that you can't do what Bernie supporters often do when a poll result comes out that they find unfavorable, which is that they'll say that young voters are being chronically undersampled because young voters don't generally have landlines and um, therefore any poll which shows Bernie down or Biden up, for example, must be skewed, even maliciously skewed in some, according to some um, because the pollsters are over-reliant on landlines, which tend to be owned only by older people and young people aren't being sampled adequately. Well, I mean, first of all, when there's a discrepancy in terms of the number of res uh, respondents to a poll across demographics, pollsters do, will overweight, for example, young voters if they don't get enough respondents to meet the threshold in the poll. So they're not being undersampled. Now, does that mean that polls are immune to criticism? Of course not. Some polls are better than others. Um, certainly the way polls get spun and framed is very much open to criticism because that's often terrible. Um, 2016 being a perfect example of that. So people with their various agendas will take polling results and like put it, put it through their confirmation bias and motivated reasoning filter and then just use it to advance whatever the agenda is that they happen to have at the time. But, you know, you have the Young Turks did a segment uh, maybe a month or so ago suggesting that Biden's lead was not as big as it seemed because the poll that they were talking about, I think it was a CNN poll, used landlines and young people don't have landlines and therefore Bernie was being undermined. What they didn't really mention or what they elided is that CNN took into account the fact that young people don't have land, landlines at the same rates as older voters and, over, over, and uh, overweighted young voters in the sample. So um, that was silly. And, and they ended up getting, I mean, the Young Turks ended up getting into a spat with Nate Silver over the methodological question there. 
And unfortunately, even though Nate Silver has um, trolled me on uh, on occasion, I did have to side with Nate Silver in that dispute because, notwithstanding his stupid punditry and the way that he can like fall into uh, annoying habits, at least in the exp- in the area of purely methodological questions, Nate Silver does have some expertise. Doesn't mean he's flawless. Doesn't mean he's above scrutiny. But he does he does know what he's talking about in terms of the mechanics of polling, um, and. Uh, and, and, and so I thought that was a silly dispute. Whenever you're getting to this thing where you're unskewing polls, you're in a bad spot. Um, anyway, so here's the YouGov national poll result that came out today. Biden, 27. Warren, 16. Sanders, 12. Buttigieg, 8. Harris, 7. O'Rourke, 3. Booker, 2. The rest at 1 or less. Okay, so there's no national primary, so take that with a grain of salt. But this finding is consistent with other polls in that it shows Warren overtaking Bernie and, and therefore reinforces the, the theory, theory that she's maybe not surging, but she's getting a, a modest uptick in support. Um, and again, party officials are looking at that data and saying to themselves, OK, maybe we got to devote resources to Warren, maybe... We have to um, direct personnel to her campaign. And maybe we need to do things behind the scenes that will bolster Warren. Um, and, and Sanders, I'm, you know, at least according to some data, is either stagnating or declining. So that is that is relevant um, now. It doesn't mean that he's out out of run, the running. Obviously, it just means that he has to deal with this state of affairs in the race, which is a lot different than say February when he was pretty clear that he was the front runner. Um, so why, why is this significant or what are the reasons why? Uh, actually, let me, let me also give you a poll that also came out, came out today from Monmouth, which is another reasonably accurate pollster for Nevada, which is more significant, arguably, because state-based polling is more predictive than national polling, especially for the four early states, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada. So the poll from Nevada that came out today is as follows. Biden, 36. Warren, 19. Sanders, 13. Buttigieg, 7. Harris, 6. Booker, 2. O'Rourke, 2. Yang, 2. The rest at 1 or less. Okay, so that's another poll showing Warren overtaking Sanders. And Biden with a pretty comfortable lead. Um, what are some reasons that Warren has overtaken Sanders given, uh, assuming that you believe that to be a legitimate depiction of what's going on? Well, what has dominated the news since late March and especially since mid April, the Mueller report. Okay. The moment Hill, and then also, you know, the incidental issues associated with the Mueller report, impeachment, uh, you know, holding various Trump officials in contempt by, of Congress, um, that sort of thing. Warren made a strategically adroit calculation, and maybe she even believes it sincerely to some extent, when, after the report was submitted, she read it immediately and declared that impeachment proceedings must begin against Trump. Sure enough, she was the head of the curve on that judgment call. And most of the other major candidates now have followed her lead, with the exception of Biden. Even Bernie had to be dragged kicking and screaming um, a week or so ago, or uh, I guess two weeks ago now, into endorsing the initiation of impeachment proceedings well after Warren did. So none of the benefits politically from calling for impeachment redounded to Bernie, they redounded to Warren. Um, I, I noticed that a lot of pundits attribute Warren's surge, quote-unquote, to the fact that she put out a lot of plans, quote-unquote, as if voters are, you know, rapturously sitting on their computers scrolling through pages and pages of dense policy material. I don't think that's the case. I think Warren has been very aggressive and assertive and early in calling for the initiation of impeachment proceedings. She correctly discerned that there was a desire for that 
kind of demand in the Democratic primary electorate. <coughs> and then among high information voters, voters who are very plugged into the day-to-day news events, she got an up- uptick um, because she kind of gave voice to their frustrations with regard to Trump, Mueller impeachment. Whereas B- uh, Bernie has kind of avoided the subject and uh, looks like a uh, evinces reluctance when it comes up, even if he uh, eventually comes around to endorsing what the mainstream position event, uh, eventually, uh, eventually is. Um, the, the point being that given where we're headed on impeachment with Democrats now doing these kind of preliminary hearings and stuff, uh, that kind of are going to set the groundwork for impeachment. So when all these contempt citations are going to be folded probably into one bundle, and then that's going to be cited as justification for why impeachment is necessary, or at least initiation of impeachment proceedings. Um, let me fix my collar here, <laughs> which I should have done right away, but who cares ultimately? Um, the, point, the point is that assuming that impeachment or the specter of impeachment dominates the American political you know, climate for the foreseeable future, Warren stands to benefit for that, comparatively speaking, and Sanders stands to be disadvantaged by that because Sanders is just not competent to engage with the minute details of obstruction of justice, of what articles of impeachment are justified. He doesn't have a legal mind in that way, whereas Warren's a law professor and a shrewd one, and a talented one, even if I disagree with her analysis of impeachment and Trump-Russia, which I do, I can acknowledge that she's competent to discuss those issues. Um, Whereas Sanders, it's just not anywhere near his forte. Um, So to the extent that this dominates political discussion for for the foreseeable future, at least among high information, plugged in voters, Warren's the one who's going to accrue the political benefits of that. Um, and I think that's reflected in the polls insofar as you, rec- you know, as, as you grant that the polls do indicate an uptick for Warren and a stagnation or at least a, or, or a minor decline even for, for Bernie. Um, so that's my quick take. Uh, again, don't to put too much stock in the polls. You got to read them uh, with, with some degree of skepticism and, and context, but there's still relevant data to uh, parse through and... That's it for now. Talk to you later.